it surprises a lot of people when I talk about this. And sometimes uh, someone who reads one of my books, I think in particular, You Can Still Win, they'll read that I was a musician, that uh, growing up, I played the piano. I went to the High School of Music and Art. And I spent a lot of time gigging around town in New York and surrounding areas, New Jersey, Connecticut, uh, some with, with, often with some very uh, well-known names who were um, uh, gigging. Uh, this was the age of, I think, the, uh, the disco era was popular, and so live acts were doing everything they could to figure out how they could make some money, and, and some pretty popular folks were playing in small clubs around town. Well, in the 1970s, um, I was uh, a musician, a, a, a young teenager, and I had an experience that really was incredible. I'll never forget this experience because it taught me a lot about life and it taught me a lot about business. As a group, we had a group, and there were two um, people in the band that were kids, essentially me and a fellow by the name of Lance. And I was about 13, I think Lance was maybe 14 or so. And Lance did a, uh, an, an act that um, he would perform in at dances and, and we would perform as a band. By the way, everyone else in the band was, was, uh, was much older. They were, they were um, you know, in their 20s and their 30s. I mean, we even had, I think, someone who was in their 40s, and, and the two of us were kids. But Lance did this act where he would, would, would do a James Brown act, where he would sing and dance, and he would slide, uh, do a split, and do all kinds of things. And uh, he would do this performance of the, of, the, of the great tune, Please, 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 and someone would put a cape on him. And people went crazy for this thing. They loved, they loved his performance. They were just astounded that uh, this, this, this kid could dance like James Brown. He was exciting. Uh, and we had a lot of fun. And I played the, the organ or the, or the electric piano at the time. And had a lot of fun doing it. We had a lot of fun touring around town and, and going various places. And we decided... Uh, the first, the person who, who led the band and promoted the band, the two of them, Danny and Nat, decided we were going to perform at the Apollo Theater and see if we could win the amateur hour, the amateur night. And so we, we uh, started going up there on uh, the, the night when they have the amateur night. And it was really exciting to um, get to Manhattan and to see the big names on the marquee of the Apollo Theater. You know, I had heard so much about the Apollo Theater. People in my family would go and see performances at the Apollo Theater. And in fact, I can recall when James Brown was performing in the late 60s that I would often hear uh, people talking with my mom or my grandmother that, hey, I went to see him and and they were talking about how exciting he was as a performer. And I remember there used to be lines of people all around the block, you know, to, to get into the Apollo Theater. So the idea of performing in the Apollo Theater, even as an amateur, was very exciting. And we would go up there and we would perform and we would try all the time to, to win. And I saw some really exciting acts during that time. You know, they would, you would go into the basement, all the amateurs would be in the basement, and then right at the, the last song of the main act, they would lead you through the theater and you would uh, come down the, the aisle on the side and then backstage, and then they would set up for amateur hour. Well, we had been performing uh, and really doing a great job, and it really looked like we were going to win. And this particular night, there was a group, and they were, there was a song that was very popular back then. It was by the Stylistics. I think it was um, um, You Make Me Feel Brand New. That might not be the exact title, but that is certainly the lyric. And when this group started singing this song, we knew we were in trouble <laughs> because they sounded so good, they looked so good, and this ballad was really popular. Uh, it featured uh, these multiple voices, and there was one guy, when he started singing, people just started screaming, and we thought, okay, this is not going to work tonight. So we, we did our James Brown act, 
and he, it, it um, uh, at the end of the evening, when they you know they put the hand over the various performers and the audience applause, uh, applauds, um, they called it a tie because uh, they they and they said okay we're going to bring them both back. So we came back the next week or, or whenever it was and. I heard earlier in the week that James Brown was going to be performing. So we thought, oh my goodness, James Brown is performing. This has got to be our week. <laughs> you know, we've got, to, we've got to win this week because we've got a James Brown impersonator, essentially. Yeah, a young kid who is a James Brown impersonator. So James Brown performed that week and it was really exciting. We saw a little bit of the show and then we came in and we uh the, the the group that did the stylistics performed before us and then we came on and right before we were going to go on stage the band leader danny called us all over and he said listen i want you to watch the neck of my guitar he said watch me carefully and i didn't know what he was talking about but i took my position and I was there on the keyboard, the organ, and I was very excited because I was playing the, the, the keyboard that the uh, James Brown uh, band had. And so we started performing and uh, Lance came out and the audience went crazy and he started doing this James Brown routine and so forth. And I'm playing the organ and everyone is going nuts because Lance is really uh, incredible this night. And the Apollo Theater had dressing rooms that were uh, that were up a stage, up excuse me, up a stairs, and I was there by the uh, stage left, there um, by the curtain, and I, I thought I saw someone running down the stairs, and when I glanced, I, I, I thought I saw someone, and I realized I did see someone, and it was James Brown. He was coming down the stairs out of the dressing room, and and slid onto the stage and started dancing with Lance. And the audience went absolutely nuts. People were jumping, going crazy. It was unbelievable. And uh, it was such an exciting moment. And just then, Danny, the, the band leader, jumped up with his guitar and he uh, essentially signaled to stop the music and he, and he went into a different song, Please, Please, Please. And Land started doing his please 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 routine and 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 the way this act went is you kind of get down on the ground and so forth and James Brown put the cape on him and uh, he knocked the cape off and the, the, the audience went nuts and James Brown uh, laughed he slapped the uh, Lance five and then he ran off stage the audience went absolutely crazy while this was going on and the MC at the time was Honey Coles, Charles Honey Coles. Charles Honey Coles was a um, a popular dancer. He used to dance with uh, Cab Calloway, and uh, he had a partner. Um, forget his name, uh, Atkins, I think was his last name. Performed in the forties. Um, his career was at a lull. Tap dance was not big in the seventies. It started to. Uh, to, to take off again, but he wasn't the MC for the Apollo Theater. Uh, you probably know him later. He was on Broadway and we performed with Tommy Toon, and uh, he was in Dirty Dancing as well, and uh, he revived his career later, you know, in his career. But during that time, he was the MC, and he ran onto the stage and started waving like this. And the audience started going crazy, and he was waving. We didn't know what he was doing. And the Apollo Theater was crazy. It was loud. People were screaming. All kinds of things. They were just—they were just nuts this night. Uh, so excited at what they had seen. And when we finally heard what he said, he said we had been disqualified because we had uh, done performed two songs rather than one song. That the rules permitted one song and not two songs. Well. The audience didn't like that idea, and uh, the audience <laughs> proceeded. They started booing. They started throwing things. They started going crazy. Crazy. We had a pretty unruly crowd, and the uh, Honey Cole started talking with our manager. They were whispering off to the sides. But he came back on stage and he said, oh, "Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
um, we're going to call it a tie tonight. And uh, everyone started cheering and everything because we weren't disqualified. Well, what was interesting that in that instance is what I learned is that the market, the market decides. You can come up with all kinds of rules, you can come up with all kinds of products, you can come up with all kinds of strategies, but ultimately the market is going to decide whether you're good or bad, whether you're accepted or not, whether it's something that they will pay for or not, whether they will deal with it or not, the market will decide. And the market decided that night that they didn't like the idea of us being disqualified because we were so good, Lance was so good, it was so great a performance that they wanted some level of justice that night. And uh, it was a great lesson. We went on to... Uh, um, you know, to continue to perform, and we and we and we won, and we did well there at the Apollo, and it was a wonderful experience, and it was one of the um, experiences that I'll never forget as a young person playing in a band uh, before I decided to go into business, and uh, also that night, which was which which was interesting. James Brown uh, invited us, uh, Lance and I, into his dressing room, and he he signed fifty dollar bills for us. Uh, he used to get paid in cash. And he had stacks of cash, you know, all on the uh, on the table, and uh, he pulled one of the, you know, pulled a couple of things out of there, signed it, and, and gave it to us, uh, while there <laughs> a couple of people looked on. So that was a bit of an exciting thing too. But I want you to remember that uh, getting back to business and how this relates to business is that the market will decide. The market will decide whether you're good or bad. Uh, so go for it. Do what do what you feel you should be doing. Uh, try it out, test it, see what happens, uh, and the market will decide. If you like the story, you like this tip, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. Uh, share this with someone who will enjoy it, uh, who will benefit by it. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel. There's a lot more to come, and I will see you next time.